Whoa. Whoa. What? Good morning, folks. It's Richard Gene, our fishing machine here. This evening, what I'm going to do is do a little tutorial about earthworms and what to look for to get them up out of the ground. I'm talking about earthworms about that long. They're tremendously good catfish bait, especially for channel cat. I've caught blue cat, channel cat, blue cat. I've caught, if you'll cut them in small pieces, I've caught bluegill, shell cracker. I've caught drum. I've caught largemouth bass, spotted bass. The list just keeps going on and on. Good bait. And the reason I'm showing this is to save you some money. Um, here in North Alabama, we have an abundance of fiddle worms. We call them fiddle worms, but they're really a species of earthworm. And I'm going to show you a way to get them up out of the ground. Um, what I'm going to do to get these this evening is I'm going to cut a small sapling down about that far off the ground with a handsaw. Then I'm going to cut the top of the sapling I'm going to make it vibrate and those worms is going to come out of the ground so we got everything we need right here we got surface rock okay we got hardwoods we're close to water there should be some fiddle worms in here no doubt all right we're going to find the right tree to get it done right here and get a few of these Worms up. I want to go catfishing. There's my toe. Just a little Stanley saw right here. Okay. This looks like a good tree right here. Real good tree. Let's just cut it off about 10 to 11, 12 inches from the ground like that okay make sure there's no poison ivy around I am highly allergic to it now my daddy could just roll in it but here we go we're gonna start right here now this should be a perfect place right here to get them up folks now that vibration is going to bring them out of the ground. They cannot stand it, folks. They can't stand it. These little root systems, these little trees and stuff around are sort of interlocking together. And they will shoot up on top of the ground just here directly. Now what they'll do is they're going to shoot plumb up on top of these leaves. They cannot stand it. Now look, look right here. Y'all see that? Now that's a small one right there. That's a real small one. But still it's a good, that's just an earthworm. It's not a, a red worm. It's not a night crawler. It's an earthworm. And that's a small one right here. We'll get a big one or two to come on up. This is no doubt about that. Usually it don't take but about oh, three or four minutes of fiddling to get them to come up. And I'm looking around because a lot of times they can be as much as 10 to 15 feet away from the tree. Them are little bitty dudes, but we're gonna get some big ones right here in a minute. Boy, that's a little bitty dude. <gasps> Here they are. There's some big ones, folks. That's what we're talking about right here. See how big that worm is? And there's another one right here. Now that's even bigger. That's the kind of bait right there I like. You can put about two or three of these on. Or a couple. That's a big one right there. And you talking about channel cat will eat it up they'd love them they have an odor about them matter of fact at night 
when you're hooking them, they have some yellow looking stuff where well, there it is that comes out and it will glow in the dark. The old timers, like I said, they call them fiddle worms, but really fiddling is the technique. They're earthworms is what they are. And the Appalachian Mountains are full of them. And I hadn't been hitting this stop in about five minutes. There's not many coming up right here, not at all. Well, here's a big one. See him crawling? Looks like a snake. That's a big one. That's the kind I want right there. What I'm going to do is fiddle on that some more. That's what we're going to do. But they, whew, they stink. It's a real sharp odor. Kind of like Elmo, you know. Or Clarence. Them old boys stink. They don't... I don't know why they don't take a bath, but one, every Saturday night they'll take a bath. They stink. They don't know it, but they stink. <laughs> Bad. But I'm going to look around a little bit more, and they leave a, a film on your hand, too. They, whew, you talking about some good fishing bait, though. Catfish love them. Now, you can see my stobs wee over yonder. We're approximately 14 feet from that tree. And there's a big old fiddle worm. So they're not real thick in here, but they're here. And I have caught some big large mouth with these baits too. Just hook him one time. Oh my, 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 my. Nothing like it. I catch 99% of my bait because I know it's better than what you can buy. Golly, what a worm. Look here, folks. That's a air good one right there. That's a dead blame good one. Clarence has got that old black hair, black beard, all that kind of stuff. He's got them old black, black, black. There's one right there. Oh, I see it right there. I didn't give him time to... I ain't gonna be able to get him. I ain't gonna kill him and try to get him out. I didn't give him time to come on out. But here's one right here. Yeah, old Clarence got them old black ear hairs in his ear. There's another that are big in there. I knew we wasn't gonna have any trouble because we had a real wet spring, wet winter, a lot of rainfall. And that right there is just perfect for fiddle worms. I have seen a dry winter, which is rare around here, but when it does happen, they're hard to get up. I mean, what it is, they go deeper in the ground. I know that for a fact. And there's another one. And I've never tried it. Another way to do it is, instead of using a handsaw, use a flat rock. If you'll use pine straw and wet it, and pack it over the top of those worms into whatever container you want to use, folks. They will they'll last several weeks. Just keep that pine straw a little bit wet, damp, not real wet, but damp. Now I'm on a uh, on a property right here. I've got permission to do this to show this technique. But now, if you're on state lands. This is against the law in the state of Alabama. You cannot cut a tree down. I just want to tell y'all that because I don't want anybody to get in trouble. But this channel is not for that reason. This is a fishing channel. Um, and there's a couple other ways to do it. Um, check your laws and regulations on state properties if that's the only place that you know that you can try this technique. Um, I was lucky, I'm pretty lucky and fortunate to know folks that, long, that owns big plots of land where I have permission to do this. I just want to stress it. Um, if you're on state property, I don't know in the state of Alabama, I'd have to find this out, but you can get these worms up out of the ground by cutting a 2 before, ripping a 2 before in half, 
uh, cutting stakes about three feet long from that two before, sharpening the stakes, driving them down in the ground, and doing the same technique with a handsaw that I'm fixing to show you. Another way to do it is simply uh, crank a chainsaw up, lay it on the ground, and let it idle. And uh, a lot of times, if there's a lot of worms in the vicinity, they'll come up. I don't really know what kind of critter is right here, but I notice there's a big old hole right here. Y'all see? I don't know what kind of critter could be down in there. Something's burled down in there. I know that. But now we got plenty of worms. Oh, Bursel's nose is getting bigger. The older it gets, it's getting all right on the end of it. It's getting big. Okay. All right, folks. A simple handsaw got the job done. I've got a lot of worms in here, and I got this one here about halfway full. And I want to thank the landowner for letting me come in here and do this. Like I said, don't do it on state lands. It's against the law. Um, but check, you may be able to drive a two by two in the ground, it'll vibrate those worms up. Um, they're nothing but a type of earthworm. And here's a, ooh, this gonna be nasty. But look at there, look at there. At them old big worms. Whew, that's great catfish bait. Worth the effort. Uh, if you can, I know bait shops is going to get aggravated at me, but some of the best bait that you can get, and you learn a lot out here, a lot of benefits, is right here at our fingertips. And uh, what I need to do now, we need to catch us some channel cats, possibly a little blue, hey, maybe even a flathead. I want to thank y'all very much for everything y'all do. That stinks a little bit, but hey, that's why it's good bait. All the great comments, hey, whoa. <laughs>